very 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 uh, good afternoon gentlemen and ladies today quarantine edition webinar number 4 uh, greetings to our people who probably i see the list that we have people from pretty much india and a few other countries around the world who joined us uh, we are at home but we have to learn and as far as our mission in wf media is to make sure as much as as much as possible learn absorb reflect do the right thing when you learn something from uh, anything make sure that you can put it to practice for good use and nowadays the subject of humanity takes a deeper 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 dive so whatever we intend to do whatever good product manufacturers have been intending to do whatever the great consultants have been talking about was probably not taken more than 30 40% maybe we can absorb more reflect more uh, as you know this subject is on green screen facades green screen ventilated facades uh, two specialist speakers are here on the panel today and uh, ahad my colleague and my co-founder will take forward the next sequence uh, amit malhotra here and once again stay home stay safe ahad over to you my friend um good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to this uh, fourth edition of uh, the stay informed uh, webinar series of uh, wfm uh, media um i uh, just want to give you a quick brief about uh, today's uh, event uh, so uh, we've been doing different topics on different uh, subjects uh, fire obviously is something which we would want to cover uh, we have covered uh, what we believe is there are five main aspects with respect to uh, facade and fire uh the first one is uh, uh, which we have completed uh, under the zac world of facades brand is basically on uh, cavity barriers so we had a interesting presentation on cavity barriers uh, the second one was on uh, fire rated doors and fire rated glazing which we did uh, uh, on tuesday uh, the third one is on rain screen facades which we are doing uh, today uh, fourth one we will have on uh, smoke control so that another important aspect of uh, uh, fire safety in facades and the fifth one will be an in-depth one on aluminum composite panel the other two uh, sessions on smoke control and aluminum composite panels we would ideally want to do it uh, before uh, the end of may so we are making a plan and a schedule we will uh, reveal uh, this to you shortly uh, right coming back to today's uh, webinar so today's webinar is on uh, rain screen facades um uh, okay uh, there's nothing there's no rocket science in rain screen facades uh, most of you would have done hundreds of projects on rain screen facades uh, thousands of square meters so uh, you might know everything about this subject uh, but the whole idea of 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 doing today's webinar was to give an overview of the basic principles of uh, rain screen facades uh, this is something which all of you know those who don't know those who are uh, attending this uh, topic or new to this uh, industry then you will get a holistic uh, idea of what uh, a rain screen facade is but the most important part is the second half of this presentation where we will be talking about uh, fire compartmentalization of uh, rain screen facades uh, two days ago uh, we did a webinar on fire doors i was uh, super impressed that our national building code india nbc uh, had uh, a lot of references to fire doors and compartmentalization but however when it comes to uh, ventilated facades uh, it's a gray area there is nothing mentioned about compartmentalization of rain screen facades so there's no code to follow so what do we do so this presentation will basically aim to give you an idea of of uh, how to uh, choose uh, the right i mean in the absence of a lack of a standard here in india uh, how to pick uh, the right uh, standard to follow you know your british standards australian standards american standards so we would want to give you uh, uh, an overview of what are the other standards and what uh, could be possibly used in india uh, to use this in india we need to be united as an industry uh, so that uh, all the consultants all the architects all the uh, the suppliers the contractors uh, uh, try to adhere to uh, one international norm because every country has different uh, uh, standards so that's the whole objective of doing uh, today's webinar um, uh, there uh, we, i mean this is uh, unbelievable uh, but uh, we received 750 registrations for this which is which is uh, which is shocking <laughs> uh, we never expected so much we were happy with 300 400 uh, plus but looks like uh, uh, people want to learn and uh, people want to know more about um, 
rain screen uh, facades and, and uh, fire compartmentalization so so i'm i'm uh, I'm, I'm very uh, grateful for all of you for joining in uh, just to give you an idea so this is more of an indian construction scenario perspective uh, i know uh, a lot of you from the middle east uh, a few from southeast asia have also joined in uh, yes uh, you will be able to correlate to 1995% of uh, what is uh, 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 said over here, but but the whole idea is to give a more Indian uh, perspective to this. Uh, but because of a lack of code, uh, we will obviously be covering codes from other regions. So uh, you will be able to correlate to whatever is said today. Um, our speakers today, um, Upendra Valinchkar, uh, he's a director at Alluvision. <clears throat> Facade Solutions. He has more than 22 years of experience. Uh, he's he's probably been uh, uh, a part of uh, uh, every supply chain of facades. He's been a supplier. He's been a contractor. Uh, he's he's uh, he, and now he's a consultant. So he has a uh, very good experience uh, in this industry uh, of uh, doors, windows, and facades. Uh, he's worked in India and uh, in uh, the Middle East. Uh, and also some projects overseas. Uh, as a uh, second speaker, Srinivas Narayanan. Srinivas Narayanan is uh, the general manager of Sidrise Group. Sidrise Group is a manufacturer of uh, of uh, pacifier protection for for uh, facades. Um, uh, the best thing about Srini is uh, uh, he's one person who has uh, who's working both in the Indian market and in the Middle East market, and he has attended over 140 uh full scale system tests so what are full scale system tests uh, you will come to know a little later in his presentation uh, uh, he has uh, because of this experience of attending so many uh, tests uh, he has seen failures he has uh, seen successes not only with uh, uh, material suppliers of composite panels, zinc, uh, terracotta, ceramic, uh, GRC, you name it, but also with contractors and uh, also with uh, project uh, with 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 project uh, uh, tests, uh, both uh, in the Middle East and in India. So uh, we felt he was the right candidate to talk about this because uh, um, in the lack of uh, a code, uh, personal experience uh, matters, and and he's someone who can uh, give uh, that experience having uh, experienced 140 full scale tests you know uh, those who have attended a test i know how tedious it is but he's attended 140 tests uh, what i mean by attended is he doesn't run a testing facility but uh, he uh, they, uh, the company he represents uh, gives a component which helps in aiding uh, fire compartmentalization of facades and uh, they have participated and he physically himself participated in 140 tests. These are mainly projects which are in India and the Middle East. So uh, he has a holistic approach of uh, of uh, uh, what uh, fire compartmentalization in ventilated facades is. Before we start, I am going to launch a poll now. Uh, uh, so my uh, first poll I'm going to launch now. Uh, uh, so I would all I would uh, like all of you to take this poll before we go to Upendra. I'm going to keep this poll on for 45 seconds. So I start the poll now. Right. I hope. Right. Uh, so 45 seconds. I will just uh, take this poll now from you. I'll just get my stop clock ready. So um, I'm sure it's clear on your screen, but I'll just read this out. According to you, what parameters do you consider while designing an external wall system? Thermal performance, air and water tightness, fire compartmentation, life cycle of a full system, all of the above. You've got 30 more seconds. Uh, the whole idea of this poll is just to get an idea uh, better of what our audience is thinking so that we can uh, customize the present the second presentation a little bit better and uh, to give uh, you better specific details so i'm ending the poll now right uh, i'll share the results a little bit later we'll get into the subject uh, now so uh, upendra as i mentioned uh, has 22 years of experience he'll give you a holistic approach of of uh, what rain screen facades are um, uh, 
lectures and uh, uh, the basic principles of uh, rain screen facades uh, yes some of this content you would have already heard you might already know but this just to warm you guys up to give a, a, a holistic approach of rain screen facades upendra i have given you the control yeah Right, perfect. Uh, you can share your full screen. Thanks, Sahat, for your introduction. Uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just will present. Are you okay, Upendra? Any issues? Yeah, I'm not. One minute. Can see the screen? Like I shared. Uh, no. We can't see your screen. Right, we can see it now. You can probably. Right, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so today's presentation will be rain screen ventilated facade. Uh, to going ahead, just we'll give brief about the company. Uh, we are a facade engineering and consulting company with more than team of uh, more than 40 designers and uh, engineers. We have uh, providing services to more than 10 countries all over the globe. We are having experience of more than 50 uh, international projects, which includes the high rise buildings. We are having expertise in bespoke system designs. To start with presentation, uh, the first question comes in mind, why we need cladding? So when it comes to a cladding, generally earlier we are using a paint in the facades but paint needs a lot of uh, maintenance so we use the cladding as an exterior double skin to stop the wind and rain entering the building it adds aesthetic value uh, uh, like uh, in case of a cladding there are a lot of material like a grc is there aluminum cladding is there composite materials are there there are uh, tiles there are uh, HPL panel, so variety of materials are available, uh, which adds the aesthetic value to the building. And this aesthetic value in turn give the benefit to the stakeholders when they are going to sell the building. It creates the uniqueness in the building if appropriate material is used uh, with the proper designing. It increases the internal insulation whenever we are adding any external skin to the building maximum the weather has been faced by the external cladding and the internal wall has to act as a air and water barrier only the 90 95 percent of the uh, rain water and the weather has been faced by the external skin so it improves the uh, thermal and acoustical insulation of the building going ahead to the uh, ecology and sustainability the sustainability whenever we are selecting any cladding uh, though, so uh, it should be sustainable and uh, since we are using sustainable uh, materials the it reduces the uh, minimize the co2 levels by reducing the uh, air conditioning loads the low level of maintenance uh, practically if we go for a proper rain screen systems, uh, it doesn't require a lot of maintenance. So periodic maintenance is sufficient to keep the building looking great. It adds financial value. Whenever we are using a cladding material, it gives uh, uh, thermal insulation 
so we are saving the cost on air conditioning also it saves uh, it gives the less maintenance so the repairs and restoration the uh, won't be required much so we are saving on cost over there maintenance is easy so we are saving the cost of maintenance it's certainly its initial cost is high but if we see the long term it's adding value whenever we are selling the building as well before understanding the rain screen principle just would like to highlight the methods of handling the facade waterproofing the facade waterproofing the age old method is a face seal system where we find uh, the all water the facade has to take 100% of the rain water whereas in the rain screen principle it's a two stage construction so basically the insulated wall Uh, two state construction the outer skin is act as a external wall and there is an inner skin and the cavity keeps the uh, moisture away and condensation away from the building and prevents the water from infiltrating into the building structure in face seal system because of weathering action seal gets cracked and due to the weathering effect uh, and uh, creating leaks into the building whereas rain there is no uh, silicon has been used for the sealing the joints so there is less maintenance and uh, the cost is low maintenance cost is low going ahead pressure equalization rain screen system so in pressure before the understanding the uh, rain screen we need to understand what is the pressure equalization whenever we are having building and uh, external skin we are having our inner cladding which is load bearing wall the outer cladding which is the system this rain screen system we put whenever we use the face seal system it creates a pressure our external pressure is higher whenever and whereas the internal pressure is low and a small crack in the silicon will lead to leakage because the uh, pressure will move from the high high zone to the low zone similarly in pressure equalization system we don't use the silicon and we try to equalize the pressure which is outside equal to the internal pressure so since the both pressures are get equalized there is no driving force for water to get into the cavity and that how we reduce not 100% but maximum amount of water getting into the building to understand this pressure equalization the rain screen system cwct has given very good uh, document on it if we see whenever we are using rain screen principle we need to equalize the uh, pressure and when we need to equalize the pressure we need to do compartmentation if you see the number 9 in this list and number 10 the number 9 is vertical compartmentation barrier and number 10 is the cavity closure which has been shown as at every uh, joint level this is required to mini equalize the pressure quickly if the volume of the pressure equalization uh, cavity internal cavity is bigger in this case the time required for equalize the pressure will differ it will be more whereas the external pressure keep on changing at the same time the different phase of building has facing the different pressure considering the west elevation where the wind pressure will be high compared to the north and south so there is a differential pressure so uh, the easy way to equalize the pressure is to uh, reduce the volume and this volume has been reduced by uh, compartmentation and that how we equalize the pressure so why rain screen facade so whenever we need to uh, consider a rain screen facade so the question comes as a why so thermal efficiency is one of the reason why rain screen facade has been used whenever there is a direct sunlight direct heat from the sun the part of it is been reflected part of it is been absorbed by the material and part of it will be transmitted to the cavity 
this cavity uh, heat transmitted in the cavity warm up the air and this when this warm up air will move up the, by convection and the cold air will come from the below and that how we keep the cavity uh, cool and thermally insulated similarly energy when that warm air has been removed and the cavity has uh, kept cool the uh, the cooling load has reduced drastically on the building in summer whereas in winter there is no warm air so it will not move up and keep the cavity uh, little warm and that how we reduce the heating load in winter season when it comes to acoustic when we use the uh, proper acoustic insulation insulation material it reduces the uh, decibel level into the building and this helps in the comfort of the occupants this depend on the uh, kind of building and the location of the building the next advantage is the superior waterproofing uh, when we add the uh, rain screen facade around 90 to 95 percent water has been addressed by the outer skin and whatever 5% which uh, enters the systems uh, has been uh, cooled by the, uh, maintained by the cavity inside the, uh, these two walls. So moisture has been controlled like this. There is no condensation. So this is giving a better uh, waterproofing to the building. Long-term durability. In the rain screen systems, there is no need of any silicon so there is no uh, bad workmanship and the uh, cracking of sealant and deterioration of sealant over the period of time and that how the uh, it remains for many years without any maintenance condensation control when properly managed condensation will form in the cladding cavity a rain screen provide for this to be drained or evaporated thereby preventing the damage and fungus growth this can be used for new as well as the refurbishment projects now why cavity if we see the key features of the uh, any rain screen facade we are having three parts three features one is outer cladding cavity and the air barrier air or water barrier the outer cladding is basically the cladding system, rain screen system we use. The inner wall is the water barrier system, what we use, and the load bearing structure. And third part, because of this uh, formation of these surfaces, there is a cavity. So outer cladding is a durable non-porous material, which is designed to shed around 90% of the 90 to 95% of the water and builds the primary impact of the exterior weather forces and UV. The air or water barrier is the final layer of protection, preventing any moisture from penetrating the building. It may be permeable or non-permeable, depend on the location of building, like a climatic conditions. And we need to make sure that Penetration should not be there. If there is any penetration into the uh, air or water barrier, it will lead to uh, transfer of uh, moisture into the building and then it will convert into the uh, water dampness in the building. This cavity is essential to effectiveness of the rain screen system, providing a secondary line of defense against the elements. It serves two purpose, basically. Allow drainage of any moisture to penetrate the outer cladding. At the same time, allows air circulation, evaporating moisture and surface of the uh, air barrier and drying the cavity. This plays a significant part in preventing water increase into the building. 
A minimum cavity of 25 mm should be maintained to allow a sufficient air movement. To proceed ahead in the rain screen design, there are, as per the AMA, their classification, there are two types of rain screen design drain or back vented system and pressure equalized system. Drain systems, drain and back ventilated systems are basically a system where we are allowing the uh, external pressure to penetrate the cavity. So to equalize the pressure, uh, not to equalize the pressure, but to, uh, yeah, to equalize the pressure. So if you see this image, the nine number, Nine number is the uh, transferring the ventilation. One minute. Yeah, so uh, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not seeing some screen part, so just uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so when uh, nine number is the ventilation path, if we see the sequential, one number is the uh, outer leaf, which is the cladding, two is the uh, ventilation uh, vertical drainage channel from which water will drain if any, any leaks are there. Uh, the penetration flashing is there, which is number three. Then we are having a ventilation cavity, air barrier. So uh, the prominent things in this image, if we see, is the air water barrier, which has been placed at number five. Then the uh, approved air barrier, which is uh, placed at number six at the below where we are ending the uh, flashing closure the bottom part of the building facade and the eight number is the moisture resistance insulation now insulation is optional in india we need to uh, do a study and based on that uh, if the backside wall is having a proper treatment then insulation uh, is optional and we can study based on the uh, requirement of the thermal designing. Now, going ahead with the pressure equalized system, in pressure equalized system, if we uh, see the difference, the difference is uh, basically the uh, cavity, which is nine number. Here, uh, it has been designed so that uh, water will get drained due to the gravity very quickly. And uh, in this system, if you notice the ventilation uh, path for pressure, equalization and drainage. Uh, so this has been reduced over here. This differentiation has been shown in the uh, next slide. However, uh, in case of back ventilated uh, facade, we need to make sure that bottom and the top should be ventilated properly and the screen should be proper, uh, perforation should be provided to protect it from the insects and uh, increase of any uh, animals. Now, what is difference between these two systems? So in drain and back vented system, the water entering the air and water barrier is unlimited. Whereas in case of uh, pressure equalization system, water entering the air and water, uh, there is a strict limitation. So to, for the air and water barrier uh, reaching the water, like. So uh, the second point is there is no pressure equalization principle adopted, whereas in pressure equalized system, pressure equalization system uh, principle has been adopted. Uh, no need of compartmentalization. 
but in case of pressure equalization to equalize the pressure quickly compartmentalization is uh, very much important now if we refer this uh, image the uh, the space between the uh, interior of the cladding to the uh, barrier is uh, wider whereas in case of a pressure equalized system we need to reduce this gap so this is the first uh, difference second is as i had highlighted earlier the uh, drainage proper drainage path has been given just to drain the water quickly and it should not flow along with the water pressure uh, same way uh, the third difference is uh, the compartmentalization so horizontally we need to close this at every joint location for creating the compartmentation and that how by by this uh, we can equalize the pressure quickly so similarly in plant detail also the distance between the uh, cladding ending and the uh, channel back is more whereas in the uh, other uh, pressure equalized system it's very small moving ahead to the rain screen cavities and fire so chimney effect when we are having this cavity there will be a chimney effect happening into the uh, cavity this chimney effect is playing a major role when in case of fire if there is a fire water will uh, in case of fire fire will move to the next floor due to the chimney effect very rapidly and uh, that is the reason why we need a intumescent cavity barriers at every floor level these intumescent cavity barriers are provided providing a gap of 25 mm gap of 25 mm for the ventilation to happen and in case of fire it will be closing uh, this uh, detailed description uh, explanation on this will be given by next presenter so this is how the ventilation is happening and whenever there is a fire and fire reach uh, the cavity barrier location the intumescent start reacting and it will close the cavity and that how we stop the fire spread moving ahead the material for cladding we are having variety of material as a composite cladding or a metal cladding in metal cladding there are many materials like a zinc is there we have the cotton steel cladding we have the uh, copper cladding we can do the hpl cladding grc or G gfrp is there stone cladings are there then there is a terracotta cladings available ceramic tile cladings are available so there are variety of cladings available uh, when we are doing the rain screen facade so when we are selecting the cladding material what precaution we need to take is the uh, fire class we need to study the uh, uh, the material what we are selecting should be a1 a2 or b grade not ldp core which is the major reason for a fire spread whenever we are providing any consultancy on any project we strongly uh, follow these three materials either a metal as a first choice or a2 or b grade uh, cladings cladding materials so when we are choosing the material we need to see the location like uh, entrances we need to see that uh, strong and durable material which can uh, resist a better impact like a stone cladding or a funder max kind of a thing will be more better uh, than composite cladding similarly uh, when we are using the soffit cladding the overhead application when we are selecting a stone it should not be stone cladding because of uh, any breakage due to any reason uh, it may lead to an accident 
also when we are using a system for rain screen cladding it should be a tested system and the system should be uh, tested as assembly which will be covered in next presentation uh, next by the next presenter basically this different systems used for rain screen so we are having variety of uh, systems uh, the hook hook on systems are there then there is a cassette cladding system then hpl glued systems are there then hpl riveting is there mechanical fixing then uh, stone claddings are there uh, stone claddings with undercut uh, fixing is available so there are variety of systems available in cladding whenever we are designing any rain screen cladding we need to give attention to holistic approach of designing like a system has to be tested the selection of cladding material plays a major role so it should should not be a ldp core material uh, it should be at least a b1 grade uh, so a fire retardant material uh, thermal performance and moisture condensation should be give due uh, consideration acoustic performance needs to be studied fire safety codes and legal reg uh, local regulation is to be studied uh, as we discussed in the start uh, there are no local regulations as of today in india uh, but as a individuals and the uh, industry professionals we need to give consideration to the uh, safety of people and use the uh, right product like uh, fire compartmentation where the uh, intumescent uh, cavity barriers are indispensable so all these precautions should be ta taken compartmentalization should be done uh, detailing should be properly planned if using a rain screen system and we are not doing the proper detailing it will lead to a problem and we need to give consideration to maintenance later on if in case of uh, uh, damage how we are going to replace the in between panel all that aspects needs to be covered so uh, this is uh, end of uh, my presentation right uh, thank you upendra um, for giving an overview of uh, the uh, <coughs> rain screen uh, principles okay uh, so this is the uh, result from the poll uh, which we had uh, earlier so 75% of the people have uh, said all of the above uh, we will take one more poll before the second presenter uh, starts. Uh, the second presenter is basically a continuation of Upendra's presentation, but because they are in different locations, we have split it over to separate uh, PowerPoints. Uh, I'll take another poll now. Um, uh, so uh, I'm going to launch the poll. It's going to be for 45 seconds. Uh, right, it started now. So if I can request all of you to please. Uh, uh, take uh, this poll uh, so this one um, what do you consider as a fire compartmentation on an external facade assembly is it uh, do you prefer it every floor or it's not a consideration is it every 15 meters or it's as per the codes so we've got 20 seconds more uh, if i can request all of you to just vote uh, what do you think uh, uh, what do you consider as fire compartmentation on an external facade assembly once we finish this, we will go to the next presenter, which is a little bit more in depth uh, on the fire test. Right, so five, four, three, two, one. So I'm closing this poll. Right. Um, go to our uh, next uh, presenter over here. Uh, this is Srinivas Narayan. Um, second. Um, uh, right, so you have given you the control. Yeah. So, uh, do you see my screen? It's okay. Am I, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You want to share the results of uh, this poll first? Um, yeah, please. So, these are the results of this poll. So. What do you consider as fire compartmentation on an external facade assembly? 60% have preferred every floor. Uh, good that uh, nobody is considered 
not a consideration and then 35 percent as per the codes so more or less what okay. you expected yeah very good thank you um I was I was just telling my colleague today we we all were uh, if if everything was would have been fine we all would have been traveling into uh, Mumbai today for the world of us tomorrow uh, these challenges have given us uh, new opportunities and new uh, uh, experience for us to uh, educate ourselves and get up to the speed in the industry. So I'm just going to share my experience uh, uh, as uh, uh, whatever is possible and please feel free to ask uh, any questions at the end. Um, and uh, thank you, Upendra, uh, wonderful presentation. And without any delay, I'll start moving into the next slides. Um, so uh, if, uh, talking about fire safety strategy, it's actually based on two fundamental concepts um, um, and regarding the fire performance of construction products, which is uh, reaction to fire and uh, resistance to fire, as you see in the image. And as the image itself um, explains uh, what resistance is and what uh, uh, reaction is. So reaction to fire refers to the natural characteristics of the material. Uh, basically, uh, these are all the properties of a material which can contribute to the outbreak and development of a fire and a resistance to fire can be termed as the ability or a, of a particular construction or a component uh, and how it achieves its function to uh, during the fire to stop the fire from spreading and when we say um, so when we say reaction to fire and resistance to fire again to give an, uh, another um, uh, perspective uh, when we test a reaction to fire, uh, in particular, there is a later standard, which is 13501, which we all um, are sta starting to uh, use uh, these standards to classify the materials, where all manufacturers are evaluating the product to get the right classification. Uh, 13501 is a combination of tests that are used, and the final classification, uh, what we get is um, A1 or A2 or B1. And when we are talking about A1, particularly, it is classified as non-combustible. And um, what happens in a 13501 test is, uh, for example, if you're having a gypsum board, which we commonly use on an on a, on a everyday construction, um, for the, the outside, you have different papers. So uh, those have to be tested. The liners have to be tested. And the gypsum core also should be tested. So uh, when we are talking about uh, MCM or ACPs, Again, we need to test uh, these particular individual components and then we get a classification of the product. Uh, most of the ACPs uh, that we have, the best in the class is A2 currently available in the market. And there are products and companies who are uh, testing the product to a higher classification, which will be uh, uh, to try and get the product to an A1 classification also. Um, uh, Currently, uh, or uh, in, in the global market, use of uh, the previous LDPE product, which was available, is now being reduced or not at all used on projects uh, uh, globally. Um, so, 13501, when, when we say it is stringent, we also have other standards like E84 or BS476 2, uh, where they uh, evaluate the, uh, the flame spread or the uh, smoke developed index also uh, 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 is, is evaluated. Uh, talking about resistance to fire, mainly what we cover in today's subject, um, or what Upendra said, that we have to stop a chimney effect. So it is basically to resist the fire or smoke uh, that, have, that can go through the installed uh, system. So resistance to fire is mainly uh, uh, tested to two criteria. One is called as insulation and another one is called as integrity. And insulation refers to a measure of heat transferred from the exposed side to the non-exposed side. And integrity refers to the ability of the system to prevent passage of flame or smoke or uh, combustible gases either through the material or around the material or between the joints of the material or between the system or the assembly. Uh, we also get uh, uh, we also had a wonderful presentation day before yesterday where we spoke about uh, radiation so these are more with glazed units or glass systems uh, the, the the point the outcome of the resistance to fire 
uh, which is a performance, you get uh, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, or 120 minutes. Um, for an ASTM E119 test, which I have highlighted here, uh, you will achieve a rating only when you comply with both integrity and insulation. Uh, but in, in, a, in a European standard, what you will get is an individual result. You can get only for integrity and also a combination of integrity and insulation. So for example, uh, if you are getting a result as um, integrity for 120 minutes and insulation for 60 minutes, you can either get E, uh, E120 or EI60. So only the lower component of what you have achieved can be classified as EI. So uh, we can discuss this later. Didn't want to go much into that technical. So uh, I'm, uh, we have two videos here, which I'm showing. Um, one of the video uh, or the one in the left was actually uh, also discussed on a, on a, on a presentation, uh, previous presentation, which was the day before yesterday. Um, the one in the left is more uh, to do with a glazing, a curtain wall, which has a component of aluminum composite panels. Uh, you can see the fire has been on the top floor and, and it, has, it has nowhere to go higher. So what happens is it goes horizontally to the next apartment uh, or the adjacent apartments. But one in the left, which you see, um, has started in a, in a podium or a, or, a, or, a, or a canopy, higher than a canopy, and it has spread. Um, uh, it's, it's a four minute video, but uh, at the end of um, two minutes, you'd have seen that the fire has reached the roof. Uh, and this is through the external uh, uh, cladding system. Also, what happens is there are contributing elements to this where the material, where uh, the fire is spreading. The source is there. The source is not yet eliminated. eliminated so the fire is still there to spread. Um, and, and this is a risk. And uh, though we can have the right systems, we, are, uh, we can evacuate the people, but the loss to the asset or the, um, the insurance premiums, everything is going to be uh, different once we have a fire like this. So another project example is um, um, uh, in Istanbul, where you can see both the systems in, a, in the same building, but one of the system, which was a cladding system, went right till the roof, um, which, is, which is a very big challenge that we all face in today's, uh, uh, when we are using the, when we are not using the right component of materials or the systems. Uh, let's go into regulatory uh, requirements. Uh, what I'll be covering is five different regulatory requirements, different regions, what I mean. So we start with the UK, where we have an approved document B. Uh, this is a very specific document, uh, specific um, uh, description of products, if I have to say rightly. Uh, the so there is a difference between fire stopping and there is a, a difference uh, between uh, cavity barriers. So these are very well defined. So fire stopping on what we do at the edge of floor, or the edge of the floor slab, and we have a curtain wall, for example. And uh, what we do for cavities, what we are talking today is on the external facade. Uh, this image gives you a, a very big, a very good, clear uh, understanding of what we are talking. So the fire does not break through the installed uh, external facade system. Uh, they, they are all described and given um, uh, a, a very good understanding to the readers where vertical compartmentation is required and also how you treat the windows uh, so that the fire doesn't spread into the cavities. We also have uh, the NHPC, which is the National House Building Council, which also says well, the only difference between the uh, approved document B and the NHPC is the corners have two different verticals. Uh, we talk about the IBC 2018. Again, uh, the IBC gives respect, uh, gives certain uh, classification of the product that has to be used, but also it says you need to have a large-scale system test, which is a full component or full uh, arrangement of uh, the system have to be tested to a fire, uh, to the fire uh, on a fire test, which is an NFPA 285. Um, one of the latest or the recent revisions in code has been the UAE Fire and Life Safety Code. Uh, it is a very, a very stringent code, very uh, uh, prescriptive and very clear. So when we are using a ventilated facade system, the document clearly says that we have to use a cavity barrier with an intumescent 
which is which solves which is used you for the purpose and uh, when we are talking about the system uh, they have prescribed what is the type of the building uh, what is the height uh, depending on the height also depending upon the occupancy and also they have said if this is a if certain types of building with occupancy it should have a a1 classification or a2 classification of a product but also you should do a large scale system test to a bs8414 or an nfp8285 which is very 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 um, prescriptive and very important to get the certification from the authorities we also have uh, the australian building code which also clarifies um, fire performance for external claddings where they say our emphasis for a cavity barrier would be as, uh, is needed to be part of a system when we are doing a, uh, uh, going through the cv3 which is a local requirement and the test standard is as5113 which again i'll come to it at a later stage on the few next few slides we have the singapore building code again uh, very prescriptive classification of the product is mandatory uh, through 13501 or a bs476 and the minimum classification of a product that you can use is class b and you should also do a large scale system test which is an nfp8285 we come to the interesting part now so when we look into the national building code of uh, 2016 there is no clear prescriptive approach that we can take or a guidance that we can take to say that okay follow this like the presentation that we had day before yesterday it was very clear on what standards and and uh, there was also presentation about um, how you can test it and um, why you have to test it and where you have to use it but uh, we do not see that in the uh, nbc in the current nbc document but this is all uh, up to us as designers or uh, key stakeholders in a building to make sure these are all uh, evaluated and to the best available uh, knowledge in the industry and and make sure that these are implemented so when these uh, when the national building code or, or other codes are being uh, reviewed or uh, being revised at a later stage uh, it, it it can it, we can still comply to the requirements uh, a quick slide to uh, give you a um, uh, update what um, upendra had presented a rain screen ventilated facade we have different choice of materials like terracotta or solid aluminum or GRC or any or MCMs. So uh, the principle is to keep them ventilated. Uh, we we cannot use a full closure product because if you it saw it it doesn't give the purpose of the ventilated facade. So any condensation water or any rain water which goes in is going to be holding above the cavity barriers. So. The right way to do it um, is to have a, a intermittent seal at the edge. Uh, what happens is the um, uh, the intermittent activates at a at a very critical temperature, and it re-establishes the integrity, and continues to expand to close the air gap, which is the primary purpose, so it doesn't spread. Um, talking about uh, testing now, going back into testing, we need individual uh, components to be tested, like we said for the B for the classification of the cladding needs to be tested. but also the performance of the cavity barrier have to be tested for example how long it takes for the barrier to close the gap uh, um, which is which is very important question so how do you evaluate it so there is a, a technical guidance document uh, which is available uh, and companies should follow the guidance document and the test procedures where, uh, which also uh, tells us where are the cavity barriers uh, uh, how they are installed and what is the insulation material or where is the thermocouples fixed so that uh, we can measure the performance at a closed furnace at a pressurized condition so uh, a few uh, one image from the installation or a fire test so you can see the fire has started inside in this case it is a rh50 that means that the air gap is 50 mm the product closure is 50 mm so once the fire starts it gets activated and it closes the gap uh, 
certification is very important. So uh, me as a supplier can say that we have the best product, but it's only the third party who will have to accredit and uh, give us uh, and gives the documentation to say that this product has been tested and it gives the limitations, uh, the field of use or the types and details and what application it can be used in. Um, I, I have four more minutes, so I'll, I'll run quickly uh, here. Uh, testing requirements when we are talking about a large scale system test, uh, we have a NFPA 285, which we spoke earlier. We have a British standard, which is uh, 8414, uh, but it gives a classification of whether it's a pass or a fail is uh, by a BRE 135. And you have an FM standard and an Australian standard 5113. Uh, the BRE 135 is, is, a, is a very, uh, it's a large scale test. Uh, NFPA is widely used in the US and in, in Middle East. The AS5113 is very particular to Australia. The only difference um, in Australian standard is they calculate the debris which falls, the, the way the debris, how much it falls. Uh, and in a BRE 135, um, in the next slide, I will tell you how the classification of the test is done. So I'm, uh, here is a test. This is during the construction of a test, uh, which was done here in Dubai. Uh, so the first image is to show you the installation where with the insulation and cavity barriers and then uh, external cladding installed. Uh, this is a test before and after uh, the fire test. This is an image. So you can see the difference between uh, the uh, uh, two sides of the cavity barrier. Once the cladding was removed, you have uh, uh, the, the insulation on below the cavity barrier and above the cavity barrier uh, shows you the uh, shows the how the cavity as a barrier has performed and how it keeps the insulation and the system in place, uh, including the runners and fixtures in place. Uh, this is a slide of uh, two, uh, two, um, two videos here running. The one in the left is to show you uh, images of, uh, I'll pause here, it's just to show you the images of previous uh, tests before and after the test on the left. And the right one is a full, low, full fire test, uh, which was done uh, for a cladding system. Uh, the main difference between an NFPA 285 and an 8414 is, um, which is on the right, 8414 uses a wooden crib. So it's natural, natural wooden crib. But in case of a NFPA 285, uh, you have a crib, on in, uh, you have a gas furnace, which is one is on the inside and, and, and outside. Both of them test the propagation of fire through the systems. But on a B, on a, to classify under a BRE 135 or an 8414, there are different thermocouples at different in level two, where they measure uh, the thermocouples, and um, it, it should it should be below certain threshold uh, uh, to get the classification as pass. Um, we move into the next uh, when when time permits, please visit uh, uh, the SiteRise website. In one of the um, uh, pages, we have we have the around 80, 85 different tests have been shared. Uh, you also have wherever possible, we have given a link to the third party certifications. The one thing which would be interesting for you is what are the different cladding types that have been used and the different combinations of insulation that have been used or uh, different air gaps that have been uh, used and what was the performance. It also has a couple of uh, uh, links to where, uh, where the test also failed in certain cases. Um, stopping here, we said that the material uh, should be approved by the third party, but also there is a certification process which uh, uh, with certification bodies like UL or Thomas Bell Wright in uh, Dubai or uh, the Intertex or the uh, Elements, for example, Warrington, also certify the full system and they list the system. They tell you what are the components used, what is the insulation, what is the cavity barrier, what is the gap to which it is tested to. So it is very important that you, for, you obtain these certificates to understand how the systems perform and you have a documented um, information to say that yes, 
this is the way that we can go and it has been tested and certified um, a cycle of testing which is again an important uh, uh, slide uh, uh, where the materials are chosen the testing partners visit our factories they audit the materials they audit the test uh, they witness the test they issue reports and then they give you the field of applicability or how you can install but it doesn't stop there they come back to our factory and they audit which is very important so certification is the way forward and it's very important uh, a very quick uh, three slides to finish uh, a project which we have recently we have completed in, in dubai so uh, this was with the grc cladding as an external fin which was running to the full height of the building and uh, so what we had to do was we had to break the facade we had to break the external uh, cladding into different types and we had to manufacture a cavity barrier in the same shape so it can uh, keep the uh, to keep the integrity and insulation property in case of a fire to reduce the spread um, the cavity barriers were manufactured in the same shape uh, so it was installed in the uh, which was very user friendly uh, i mean to keep uh, the contractors as easy as possible to install and then the cladding comes from the outside um, uh, so, so it's very important also to start these process uh, during the design phase. So we cannot start detailing after the first five flows installation has started, or once we have decided on the systems and then come back and decide, oh, we forgot the vertical barrier or the horizontal barrier. So it is very essential that we get involved and we discuss this at an early stage. And uh, so if, uh, and then have a technical design and then supply the materials and uh, we give installation support and through to warranty and sign off, uh, which is the full life cycle of a project which is completed. Uh, last three slides. Um, three, we have a three team approach, uh, which we would like to share. One is think ahead because uh, early you use, early you engage, it is always better. Uh, today's condition in the outside world uh, is, is the very right example where uh, buildings have been changed uh, from the purpose what it has been built for. A hotel is being converted into an hospital today. So we cannot design a building considering this is going to remain as a hotel or this is going to remain as a commercial building. So we need to keep that in mind and design the buildings. And finally, the service, uh, the service life of the building and uh, it's very important by the uh, by uh, you are not building for five years or 10 years we are building it for 80 years or 70 years so during the phase uh, the building comes through lots of environmental changes the products are exposed to different environments so uh, these have to be considered and you should have the right documentation to see yes this is going to help us and uh, this is going to support and this is the evidence that we need for the longevity of the product finally as side uh, we stick with our commitment our perspective is always system test specification and compliance we have a 35 year experience so uh, different markets and we are able to give you uh, different types of solutions which we have would have experienced for example uh, penetration through a cavity barrier is a solution that we can do or a balcony bracket uh, how we can do it it has come through our experience um, and my final slide is it's, it's not it's it's last but not the least and i would like to take a moment to thank all our frontline warriors, namely uh, who are contributing in the medical industry, specifically doctors and nurses, and also to the scientists who are working very hard round the clock to come out with a, um, uh, with a vaccine to tackle this issue. So my, my, my uh, support and my thank you to them. Thanks, Ahad. Yeah, thanks, Renivas. Uh, thanks for that um, insightful uh, presentation. We've got a set of questions. Uh, Got 10 minutes for this webinar to end so we'll take uh, a set of questions uh, now um right i will uh, give you a break for two minutes so we'll take the first question for upendra upendra there's a question for you by saurav cabra how does the rain screen system work when there is a combination of glazing and metal composite panel uh, glazing and uh, like uh, when we are having a metal composite panel 
We are using rain screen cladding, which is generally in India what we use is the back ventilated system where uh, we don't do the compartmentation and uh, the cavity is a continuous cavity. So that is the uh, basic fundamental of uh, metal cladding. Whereas when we use uh, glass cladding, uh, we go for uh, either a unitized system nowadays, uh, which is having itself the proper uh, ventilation system uh, like a pressure equilibrium, so we allow uh, cavities for condensation. We at the spandrel locations, we give the uh, drainage hole. We do the proper air sealing at the back uh, of the mullion. So that how we uh, these are different products and needs to be treated differently. Okay, uh, I hope this answered Saurabh's question. Uh, another question for you uh, from Manoj Kumar. How do you ensure pressure equalization in semi-unitized system at vision panel? Semi-unitized system pressure equalization. When when we are using semi-unitized system. At a, at a vision panel. Yeah, at a vision panel, certainly, because uh, whenever we are having a, semi-unitized system we uh, in a, in a gasket the peripheral ceiling we need to create a cavities to bring the pressure into the system like to equalize and uh, similar way uh, whenever we need to equalize we need to think of two things one is the infiltration and exfiltration so the cavity along the periphery of this uh, panel needs to be uh, treated properly and the, uh, the ventilation slots should be provided properly. Okay. Um, I'll take uh, two couple of questions for Srinivas. Just a second, I've just got, uh, right. Um, give me a second. Right. Um, uh, uh, well, okay, there is a, a question which uh, I think uh, was interesting. Uh, let me just figure this out. We've got so many questions here. Um, uh, just checking. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, no, it's, I'm just trying to search the several questions I've found. Uh, yes. That, uh, Interesting. I'm just trying to. Uh, uh, okay, till I search that, I'll take one question. Uh, how could SideRise help with his experience or assisting fabricators and installers develop a system which could comply with NFPA 285? Um, that has been our strength. Uh, we have learned uh, a lot. Uh, we know how, what are the requirements and the classification and the performance requirement, um, not only with regards to uh, uh, a cavity barrier, but also as a whole, as a system by such. So uh, we are always here. Uh, we are available here uh, to give discussions, but uh, we will keep uh, we will discuss uh, individual projects or individual uh, tests. Uh, we will consider them individually uh, and uh, give our opinion. But ultimately, the test ownership uh, is for all the stakeholders to uh, uh, take the right decision. And we don't stop with the test. It should be applicable and, and uh, installed uh, on, a, on a project also. So it's very important that uh, those are considered during the design of the test itself. So right, we are here to support, we can do it. Right. Uh, so this was the question which uh, uh, I wanted to propose earlier. Whether insulation is required for metal cladding? If no, then why all the tests, NFPA or BS8414 or any system grade, uh, system test for FR grade material is done only with insulation with fire barrier. If you are not using insulation, then is cavity barrier required or is it possible to do a test without uh, uh, insulation? So this was a question by Sudhan Shudhige. Okay. Um, a test can be done without the thermal insulation, but it is a component of the facade. So as uh, Upendra rightly said, uh, do you have to use insulation in, in India? The straight answer is you have to do the calculations. Uh, when you come to a, a, a market like uh, uh, Dubai, insulation is mandatory and uh, you need that thermal insulation layer to give the thermal insulation performance. So uh, talking uh, or same in the UK where you have two different temperatures through the, through, throughout the year. 
if I have done and we have done quite a lot of tests in Malaysia, all the NFPA, all the 8414 tests that we have done is uh, except one test, everything is without thermal insulation because they don't use thermal insulation on their buildings. And uh, this is because of the temperature and the humidity. So, uh, and do you require cavity barrier? I cannot answer that. The straight answer is uh, you need, uh, even if, if, for example, if you're using a, a non-combustible A1 cladding, and if you're not give, you're still having the, res the source of fire is inside an apartment. And if you're not giving the fire breaks, you're still uh, compromising the system, the safety of the system and solid aluminum or a stone, for example, if a system fails, the stones will fall as a big piece, which is safety issue for people who are going inside uh, to evacuate people or firefighters, it is a risk. So uh, 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 compartmentalization uh, is important, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Okay, um, question for you, Upendra. Uh, what do you think of using 3mm thick aluminum sheet cladding system at a commercial building? Uh, 3mm thick aluminum solid sheet cladding. Basically, uh, if we see as a material, it's a A1 grade material, so uh, there is no any uh, concern on fire. And whenever we are using uh, solid sheet cladings, uh, uh, considering the Indian uh, culture and the workers uh, who are not very much experienced in handling the materials, like uh, on many of the projects, I had noticed. Uh, when they grew the uh, composite cladding material, they damaged the outer skin as well. Whereas if we see the uh, study the product properly, uh, we need to maintain 0.2 mm uh, that uh, core onto the external uh, skin of the uh, ACP cladding. And uh, it, once it is get damaged to that external, then there is a cracking and over a period of time, the life uh, of the uh, product, because it is always a uh, facing uh, dynamic wind loads and that corner will uh, get damaged. So always uh, we prefer a solid sheet cladding, which is a FR uh, A1 grade material. At the same time, there is no need of growing. We need to properly bend and the uh, joints are very strong. So 3mm okay. solid sheet cladding is better for commercial buildings as well. Right, so it's better. Okay, I hope that answered your question, uh, Amol. Uh, okay, uh, question to Srinivas now. Is it necessary to use Lamathome board at spandrel location where the side rise insulation is fixed between spandrel panel, back face and outer face of building line? Um, what we are discussing here is very specific to external facade assemblies, which are for which are for cladding. The question is more related to a, a perimeter barrier application, which we are not covering on this. Uh, the short answer is depending for if you're is the question given from Dubai or India? Mr. Rakesh Morudkar from Pune, India. Okay. So uh, looking at a regulation in, in Middle East, for example, in 2018 edition, they have requested a performance. Uh, I mean, the document says there is a performance requirement on spandrel. So yes, you have to protect it. Uh, in, in with regards to India, the codes are have to be changed, have to be revised. The current codes do not say what is need to be followed, but it is always a best practice to protect the curtain walling at the spandrel location. Right. Um, there is a question uh, for you, Srinivas. What is the normal practice worldwide to use open and closed systems in percentage? Uh, which one is more prominent? Um, if I, if I look specific to uh, Dubai, we, have, we would have done uh, 70 plus large scale system tests, out of which uh, if I've done NFPA 285, uh, 70 tests, uh, 65 of, the, of them have been closed, concealed and sealed with sealants. Uh, but when I look into an international market where we have done 8414 tests, everything has been open joint. So um, specific to uh, Middle East, it's commonly used uh, system is a concealed system. Uh, and uh, international market, it's all about uh, uh, open joint system and ventilated system. Okay, um, question for you, Upendra. Um, what, um, what, what is your views on using polycarbonate as a rain screen uh, facade material? Polycarbonate uh, we can use as a rain screen uh, 
material because they are having very good uh, system altogether and uh, if it has been supplied through the uh, system uh, vendor uh, then uh, the installation support we get uh, in india specifically i'm talking and uh, they check the uh, installation process so polycarbonate can be considered as a uh, cladding material okay so can be considered have you done any projects any uh, experience uh, for you uh, with the same not uh, not really we we had not uh, done any project with uh, polycarbonate as a cladding material but generally uh, as a skylight it has been used but not for the rain screen cladding but they are having right. a product with a proper system for rain screen cladding right um another question for you upendra is there any acceptance limit for rainwater leakage because we have done many water spray tests from outside and uh, found that the system is okay will it sustain the rainwater pressure uh, if any leakage or seepage is found any acceptance limit and uh, any references uh if we if we see the uh, presentation like uh, there are two systems what i had uh, defined so uh, generally in india uh, and many systems has been designed uh, based on the uh, drain and ventilated cavity system wherein there is no limitation for water entering the system only we need to design it in a such a way that uh, maximum water should be uh, uh, protected uh, controlled by the external facade so there is no as such uh, documentation on this but certainly right. around 90% uh, water uh, has been taken care in case of the uh, drain and back ventilated facade whereas in uh, case of the pressure equalized system uh, this is reduced drastically because when we pressure equalize this system uh, the uh, because of the pressure equalization uh, the water entry into the system is uh, reduced considerably like uh, such a somewhere around 95% of the water will be taken care by the equalization compared to 90% uh, where uh, this drain system because there is no limitations uh, laid by the codes whereas when we do as per uh, pressure equalization there is a strictly limitation for the water uh, entry into the system right um another okay this question for srinivas are there any fire testing laboratories in india which conduct fire testing uh, um no uh, uh, to what uh, there might be uh, but uh, we have not been involved in any test uh, we have had indian products being tested uh, and certified uh, in dubai through thomas well right but uh, Uh, we have certification bodies in india like ul has a very good office uh, they can do the certification but a laboratory uh, no i don't i'm not aware of it. okay fine so the answer is no so you're not aware of yeah. okay i'm not uh, aware of it yeah. there's a question from uh, amit chobal uh, does the side rise product allow seismic movements and still be effective um when we are talking about external facade cladding arrangement which is the topic today um seismic movement uh, uh, because it's not touching the cladding so uh, uh, it's it's a ventilated facade there is a 25 mm gap so i don't know what what he means by seismic but if he is meaning uh, a perimeter barrier where will a product uh, will the product be usable for uh, seismic movement the short answer uh, straight answer is yes there are uh, en standard to which uh, you have to do a cycling for the product uh, um, where we have done the test and we can share the information if requested directly so yes right. short answer is yes right um, question for uh... uh either of you you know at what intervals are intumescent uh, barriers uh, need to be fixed um uh if you mind the open i'll answer uh, the 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 codes are very prescriptive, uh, prescriptive. so uh, if you look at uae or if you look at nhpc or uh, if you look at uh, abcb uh, it's every floor so compartmentalization has to be vertical has to be uh, there and horizontally at every floor so you have to compartment between occupants also 
you have to compartment around the windows also. So every floor is dancer. Right. Okay. Um... Right, I'm just uh, picking another question. Uh, right, um, uh, this is for Upendra. Do you recommend to provide sub base with plaster and bitumen paint for rain screen cladding system to avoid any impact on base wall? Basically, in India, when we where we don't use the vapor barrier system and the insulation systems. Certainly, uh, uh, the internal wall has to be protected for uh, air and water. So uh, the proper treatment has to be based on the uh, material. We need to select the proper treatment and uh, finish it. Certainly, we need to study and we can answer. OK, fine. Uh, this question is for Srinivas. Is the wool board layer required in spandrel panel along with Lama Therm insulation? Again, a question uh, deviating from external facade assembly that we are talking today. Um, you, you see, uh, the, the, we can we can have a separate presentation in relation to this because I don't want to confuse the audience with the subject that we are discussing. But uh, wool board, I don't know what the wool board is. Uh, do you need insulation on spandrel? The short answer is yes. Uh, Upendra will also agree with me. Uh, yeah. And uh, do you need, and it is always a best practice to protect the curtain walling at the spandrel location. Uh, but uh, insulation in a spandrel is must. You cannot compress uh, a perimeter barrier to the glass in the spandrel because it solves no purpose. If the glass if the, if the glass will break due to heat, uh, and it also depends on the uh, uh, project design whether you have a drop beam or an upstand. You don't know. You have to. Uh, you cannot answer it straight, but insulation on a spandrel panel is required, yes. Okay, sticking to the same insulation question, um, uh, is insulation required in India or not needs to be checked is what Upendra said. Uh, is it needed for a more colder climate or a hotter climate? Either of you can answer. Uh... The insulation, like if we see, uh, as we see, there is no regulation uh, in India. Uh, the uh, insulation is must in uh, European country where the uh, external climate is very cold and the internal is uh, warm, basically. And uh, in such condition, there is a temperature difference is more than 20% and there are condensation chances. So. Uh, when we are designing, there are many parameters uh, attached to it, external temperature, internal temperature, whether it is a vapor barrier or, and insulation, whether it is an air barrier and insulation. So many factors are attached to it when we are uh, selecting. But uh, as a uh, climatic condition in Europe, where the climates are very cold, certainly uh, insulations are must. Whereas in India, the if we see the temperature difference uh, to the interior to the exterior, like generally we maintain temperature of around 24 degree into the building, whereas the external temperature is generally around 40 degree max. Uh, in few cases, certainly it reached to 45, 46 also. Uh, and the chances of condensation happening uh, are uh, comparatively less. And the uh, internationally, generally, they use uh, dry wall, uh, cavity walls. Uh, whereas in India, we use uh, aerated blocks or uh, masonry block work, which are very good insulating material. So uh, it's depend on the uh, material what we are using uh, and what kind of insulation that wall is uh, providing and what is the purpose. Like uh, uh, generally, if we see the Indian design uh, by the uh, many architects, the dead walls has been used for uh, services area, not over the uh, usable area like office uh, areas. Office areas are provided with the glass. So on such area, uh, the uh, services area, whether there is a really need of so much of insulation uh, I think when we are putting a rain screen cladding. So uh, this study needs to be done before uh, using insulation, but in India, as a, a principle uh, is not very much uh, intended to use uh, insulation 
and based on location and uh, use of that wall we can certainly looked into the need of insulation for uh, sound as well as the uh, thermal right um we'll take three more last questions uh, this question is uh... just, to, just to cover what uh Upendra also said uh, basically insulation is to stop the heat simple so um it depends on the location and uh, where it is it's to stop the heat right um okay um Okay, uh, there's another question. Uh, is there any expiry on intumescent products? Because sometimes certificates have validities, but the products are expired. You know, how, what do we do with those conditions? Is there any expiry on intumescent products? Um, Pindra, I who, I, who, has asked? who has asked? The gen Gauri Sankar has asked. Okay. Very, 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 very good question. Um, as as we have been discussing about uh, external facade assemblies uh, and ventilated system, the product at some point has to be the life cycle of the product has to be uh, 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 the longevity should be very high. So the intumescent. Uh, so what there are test methodologies. There are uh, external tests. As a company, as a manufacturer, what we do is we, we put the product to an extended life cycle. So where the product is being uh, exposed to different environment conditions. So we can accelerate it up to 60 years and then check what has been the exposure and how the product reacts. So uh, we have done that, which is also part of our certification and documentation. So when people like Upendra or anybody who's asking, so when we are designing it, yes, the intumescent, does uh, we have tested up to 40 years we are doing an extended uh, up to 60 years so we will be able to give the data to say that the intermescent will work for xyz period uh, after an xyz period also okay uh, right uh, so uh, two more questions so upendra for you what is what is basically a root cause for water leakage of a facade system if any leakage found sealing with a sealant is it advisable in those external joints for rectification uh, it's based on the uh, system as i had uh, mentioned uh, there are two systems basically face seal system and the rain screen principle system if we choose the uh, system correctly uh, there is no need of any uh, sealant as such uh, for the major uh, water leakages and uh, certainly when uh, like uh, in case of uh, rain screen cladding there is no need but uh, address uh, going ahead uh, in facades when we are doing the peripheral sealing certainly if that silicon workmanship or due to the uh, some reason if it is uh, not done properly certainly we need to remove the uh, not local uh, problem should not be uh, solved it should be solved uh, we need to strip off the uh, large portion of the sealant in that area clean that surface and we can treat it properly so uh, it's a workmanship related thing and that's the reason when we are talking about the rain screen facade where there is no need of sealant so uh, we don't get into the uh, issue of maintenance with sealants I'd like to add Upendra uh, to what uh, you just said about sealants because it's my subject that uh, in case you need to redo this, you will have to completely take off the silicon, add a remover so as to making sure that there is no more residue left because the older silicon which is left on the surface might have some dust. So then, then you'll have an issue. So you'll have to really remove completely and then redo the thing, making sure that you're using the right type of sealant uh, which is very, very important on that subject. Right, right, yeah. right. Last, last question. In the absence of uh, you know codes in India, uh, who gives the wa warranty uh, for these kind of designs? Uh, is it the consultant, the supplier, contractor, vendor? Who who does this? Who takes the onus? Basically, I think it's the question about. Yeah. Um, uh, onus is uh, supply access. Yeah, you're saying something, Shrini. Uh, sorry, sir. So uh, when it comes to individual products, yes, the performance of uh, individual products are given by an individual uh, manufacturer. But when we look at a system, when you don't know what to use or how to use it, 
or if there is no guidance to use it, uh, uh, this is a very big question of how the product will perform in a fire test if you don't have the documents. But uh, Upendra wanted to answer this question, so I'll leave it to him to answer. Yeah, uh, as he rightly asked, there are no codes. So uh, it's basically when there are no codes, we are taking support in India. Many, many times we are referring to the international codes, either EN or BS uh, or some other codes. But generally, EN and BS has been used uh, very widely in India. Uh, so uh, the codes, we can refer the international codes if there are uh, no codes over here. And uh, whenever there is a consultant in picture, he gives the uh, guidance how to deal with it and what systems. So uh, ultimately, as a contracting process, it will be responsibility of the uh, facade contractor who generally takes uh, back documentation from the uh, all uh, system suppliers, the product suppliers basically, and combinedly he provides the product so it will be as of today the indian practice is to uh, it is the responsibility of the facade contractor who design and build the uh, facade right uh, i think we are done for today uh, uh, thank you all for attending today's session next webinar is on uh, saturday uh, so we've got uh, the topic on integrated facade systems for uh, symbiotic built ecologies. Uh, we have an interesting uh, couple, architect couple presenting uh, on that topic. And we also have a topic on sealing and uh, bonding uh, in the same session. So uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, you can attend, you can learn about by attending that session. The link is uh, mentioned over there, wfmmedia.com uh, slash webinar uh, five. I'll, I'll let uh, Amit Malhotra close today's session. So thank you once again uh, great attendance of 600 people who have been on this uh, webinar very interesting thank you very much Srini and Upendra uh, thank you. for your wonderful presentation hope to have you back soon I would just like to add that uh, over the next couple of weeks we are uh, revving up our WFM media so you could actually be able to see the past webinars as well as the ones who are coming in the next months directly go to the WFM site and be able to register directly from there rather than getting our email. We are trying to prep up our technology to make sure that it's as uh, updated and all the videos and presentations, whichever people will allow us to update will also be on the site. So keep checking WFM media as frequently as you can to make sure that you have all the information. Thank you. Good night. Have a nice evening yeah. and stay safe. Stay home. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks. Bye.